Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to Keepers. I'm Matt Ufford and this is the fantasy football show that's thankful bye weeks are over. Now if I could just get rid of injuries and benching the wrong players every week, I could stop hating fantasy football. No dice. Let's go to sits and starts for week 12. Start Tony Romo. Now I'm sure you Romo owners are having a pretty miserable season, but you can rest assured that he'll have a good go of things at home against the soft Redskins D. Sit Michael Ashore. He's really only been a good play when he's gotten into the end zone, and the Texans haven't given up a rushing score all season. They're also among the best in the league at defending the run in terms of yardage, so don't expect LaShore to make it worth your while with 90 or 100 yards. Start the Rams defense. They're up against the Cardinals, who averaged 1.4 yards per passing play and had just 41 net yards in the air last week. 41 yards passing for a team with Larry Fitzgerald. Woohoo! Start pretty much any defense against the Cardinals. Sit Brian Hartline. I could see Devon Bess accumulating some yards underneath against the Seahawks defense, but I don't like Hartline's chances against Seattle's big physical cornerbacks. Start Akeem Nix. He's been out or ineffective for much of the season, but he caught nine of his 14 targets for 75 yards in week 10, and he's back to 100% coming off the bye. I like him at home against the Packers, who've had trouble with the league's better receivers this year, and will be without Clay Matthews and Charles Woodson. Start Justin Blackman and Cecil Shorts. <laughs> can't say the shorts without laughing. <laughs> With Chad Henney getting the nod against the Titans, both wideouts should benefit from a Titans defense that's given up 20 passing touchdowns in 10 games and an average of 266 yards through the air to opposing offenses. Man, I can't believe Chad Henney was the answer to Justin Blackman having a good game. Or the answer to anything, really. If you're doubting my faith in Henney, let's evaluate my record in the reality check. Last week I nailed the call of starting Marcel Reese and Carson Palmer. But when I tried to push the envelope with some daring calls, that didn't turn out so hot. I thought Nick Foles would do well against the porous Redskins defense, but he finished with just over 200 yards passing and a couple of interceptions. I think his hair was in his eyes. I also thought that Andre Roberts would be a sneaky good play over Larry Fitzgerald. I was right about Fitty getting shut down, one catch for 11 yards, but Roberts was even worse, one catch for seven yards. What was it I said? You'll just have to trust whoever's playing quarterback for the Cardinals this week. Ah, famous last words. Let's go to the trading block. Buy low on Steven Ridley. The Pats running back got just 28 yards on 13 carries in the slaughter of the Colts on Sunday. But with Rob Gronkowski out until the playoffs and Aaron Hernandez fighting a nagging injury, the Pats will have more touches on the offensive merry-go-round. Even with Shane Vereen and Danny Woodhead siphoning carries, I'd love to add Ridley to my lineup. Sell high on Michael LaShore. As I said earlier, he's headed for a bad week against the Texans. But more than that, I wouldn't want to rely on him every week. He hasn't had a 100-yard rushing game since his season debut in week three, and his value is too closely tied to him getting into the end zone, something he's only done in three games this year. I'd try to get someone more consistent with a lighter schedule down the stretch. Buy low on Eli Manning. He had a lousy three-week stretch going into the bye, but the talk of tired arm is a load of nonsense. After Green Bay, he's got matchups against two of the worst passing defenses in the league, the Saints and Redskins. He's about to have three great weeks in a row. Sell high on Matt Schaub. 500 yards passing and five touchdowns was a complete aberration. The Texans rarely throw it enough to merit starting Schaub as a QB1 in most leagues, so his stock won't be any higher than it is right now. And now here's Isaac with a festive weather review. The turkey is a sacred bird, that's why we eat you today. Thank you, Matt. The holidays have finally come, and we are all covered in a thick, gooey, warm holiday glaze. Expect the national temperatures to rise slightly, because we know everybody's got a big old bird in dim ovens. And if anyone out there is sad that these professional athletes have to play on such a beautiful Thanksgiving holiday, don't be. We all know that they can afford their own small country in which that they can invent their own special Thanksgiving holiday that they can celebrate literally any time in the off season. Back to you, Matt. I'm not joking, I'm joking. Thank you, Isaac. Time to close things out with Hire and Fire. Hire Jeremy Curley for Thanksgiving night and fire Andre Roberts. Curley had seven catches for 120 yards in the Jets' Week 7 game against the Patriots, his best game of the season. The Patriots are 30th in the league in passing defense and have given up a league-worst 51 pass plays of 20-plus yards. Someone on the Jets is going to get that yardage, and Curley's the most likely target. As for Roberts, I learned my lesson when John Skelton got benched for Ryan Findlay. You can't trust the football to end up in the hands of a Cardinals receiver. 
Every week there's someone on the waiver wire who's a better player than Roberts. Hire Ronnie Hillman and fire Joyke Bell. Hillman will start in place of Willis McGahey down the stretch run, and even though he'll lose touches to Lance Ball and Noshawn Marino, he'll still get a good workload against the awful Chiefs in Week 12. Even if he doesn't get in the end zone, he should still be good for 100 combined yards. Bell had a brilliant Week 9 that made him a hot waiver wire pickup. Since then, though, he's rushed for 8 yards in 2 games. That's 8 yards total. More like joke, Bell. Nailed it. Bonus hires. Pick up Bryce Brown and Colin Kaepernick if you can. With LaShawn McCoy still complaining about a headache on Monday after suffering a concussion, Brown's the likely start against Carolina. I think he'll be a great play at RB2 or Flex. As for Kaepernick, well, we all saw what he did to the Bears on Monday night. Given a chance to back Alex Smith as the starter, Coach Jim Harbaugh instead left the door open by saying he's going to go with a hot hand. Now, I can't be sure that Kaepernick will get a chance against the awful Saints defense, but I'd pick him up and put him on a roster just in case. Also, you could pick up Plaxico Barres now that he's back on the Steelers, but you'd just be shooting yourself in the leg. That's it for this week's Keepers. Your outdoor activity of the week, going for a walk after Thanksgiving feast. Aids in digestion, helps make room for pie. Set your lineups and stay away from Black Friday sales. See you next week.